Most of those unfortunate enough to encounter the xenomorph within the alien universe recognize the severe danger of the species. But for a select few, the xenomorph would become an object of admiration and obsession. One such case would be Colonel Dr. Paul Church, as depicted in Alien's Labyrinth. Working under the United States Colonial Marine Corps, Dr. Church was the lead researcher on the Anominata Space Lab, studying captive xenomorph specimens and aiming to understand the creature's behavior, with the ultimate intention of possibly being able to control them for use within the USCM. Church claims to have performed hundreds of experiments on the xenomorphs, compiling a data overview that, in Church's words, would set a new standard for bioanalysis. The alien specimens held within the research lab were branded with tracking devices and for Dr. Church's experiments, held captive within a 30 feet deep pit consisting of a solid, acid-neutralizing alloy. To prevent escape, the pit had been protected by sensors controlling a motion-activated electrode force field. Any escape attempt would be recognized by these sensors, shocking the creature into submission. Periodically, shocks would be administered by Church regardless to prevent his test subjects from going into a dormant state as previous experimentation determined that the xenomorphs don't survive long while separated from their clan. Within this pit, there were doors leading into Church's maze, with further opportunities to study the intelligence and behavior of the species, and further twisted experimentation. Dr. Church notably studied the eating habits of the xenomorph, determining that they seem to be carnivorous, though consuming food for sustenance is second priority to eliminating threats to the species. In its captivity, one particular xenomorph, given multiple cute, ironic nicknames by Church that one would more likely give to a puppy such as Trixie, Taffy, and Toodles, was being starved for an extended period of time. With the pit doors open, the specimen was led into a maze and presented with two choices, a pig, ready for the slaughter on one side, and on the other, an armed guard. Immediately, the alien moves in to attack the guard. Church observes, as you saw, it didn't hesitate. It will starve to death before it will neglect an opportunity to attack an enemy. I believe they don't consider themselves as individuals. They fight for their species, not themselves. They cannot be frightened, intimidated, or bribed into not attacking. Pain, fatigue, overwhelming odds, nothing mitigates their aggression. It was clear to Church that the hive mind of the xenomorph could be something that may be able to be exploited, and its tests, though sometimes repetitive, held the purpose to somehow understand it better, with, at least officially as far as the USCM had been concerned, a stance of, know thy enemy. In another experiment, two human subjects are prevented before the captive xenomorph in Church's maze. One had been injected with FITR, a telepathian that induces a sense of invulnerability and increased mental strength. The other, stone cold sober, and quite visibly, as Church puts it, scared wizless. The results of this experiment led to an interesting find regarding the alien's psychic capabilities, as theorized earlier. The good doctor explains, First, it went for the scared man. What caused it to pause was the will of the drugged man. Aliens communicate with each other telepathically. They can sense fear in other animals. My working hypothesis is that they can physically see minds of men, but cannot understand them. The man under the influence of the FITR was willing the alien to stop its attack and it did. This and previous experiments indicate that a weakened alien can have its actions influenced by a human mind in an exalted state. No opportunities were wasted by Church, and once expired, he was quick to perform dissections on aliens, opening up the skulls of the dead creatures and trying to see what makes them tick, observing the biological makeup of what would serve as the alien mind. The surface is lined with a compound of cells of fullerite-encased herlantium. The internal structure is solid neurons in two binary fans. Very, very dense. I think it's the alien's psychic receiver. The fullerite and herlantium pick up E-waves, and the binary fans create interference patterns from electromagnetic fields. So it would not only receive brain waves, but enable the alien to assess another animal's physical characteristics by seeing its subtle body. That's why strong electromagnetic fields really affect the aliens, gives them the equivalent of an ice cream headache. It became clear to Dr. Church's peers what could be unlocked by his studies of the xenomorph biology. The fullerite and herlantium could be synthesized, the psychic receiver could be replicated, and limitless possibilities could follow suit. Of course, the psychic sense organ is only part of the picture, Church explains. This structure here is very like a cerebellum. There is an enormously complex neurological structure in the dorsal region that I suspect is what the alien has instead of a brain. 
To put it mildly, however, there were concerns over Dr. Church's experiments, about what exactly had been authorized, whether or not he was misappropriating USCM funds for ulterior motives, and several highly suspect deaths taking place under his jurisdiction. Most alarming of all was his erratic behavior, far beyond forgivable eccentricities and suggesting complete madness, with beliefs and claims that suggest a morbid admiration for the alien enemy. Despite results that showed promise to his superiors, Church would be hiding many secrets and a terrifying history connecting him to the Xenomorph. Perhaps the most interesting of Church's findings would be unlocking the key to what leads to what naturally ends the Xenomorph life cycle. With his test subject dying, Church supposes the cause of its demise. What exactly caused this creature to fade away and die? Who knows, says Church. Too long away from the Hive, too long away from the Queen, old age, discouragement, in captivity, they just die. As I told you, they just die. Disturbingly, Dr. Church expresses mourning over the death of his alien friend. Does your heart know this monster? Do you see the desperate fear of your fathers in its blind destroyer's head? When men first looked into the outer void, into space, they looked into the soul of this soulless creature. When men kill each other and hurt their children and close their eyes, so that good will not distract them, they are worshipping that creature. In their hearts, all men would like to be like this one, hideously strong, unchained by conscience, charged by the black heart of the cosmos to go forth and annihilate. Goodbye, you dark thing. Despite his methods, it's hard to deny that Dr. Church's studies led to some integral breakthroughs regarding a better understanding of the Xenomorph, in particular his theory regarding their psychic abilities and hive mind. Do you think this hypothesis is sound, or do you believe the aliens communicate and connect in other ways? Comment below and let me know what you think. And stay tuned for more on Dr. Church, I'll be delving deeper into his history and rapport with the Xenomorph species in my next video. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for all the latest theories and explanations of the alien universe. I'm always eager to cover your ideas, so if you have a suggestion for a topic, please comment below. You can also follow Alien underscore Theory on Twitter and Alien Theory YT on Facebook for more. And until next time, this is Alien Theory, signing off.